So for most of us, medical training through all of the pains of residency and medical school is often bearable when we start to fantasize about life on the other side of all of this. You know, life as an attending physician when uh, all of a sudden the sky turns all rainbow and you know money starts to fall from the sky and then we're our own bosses and then we're supposed to live happily ever after. The reality, however, is often not the case. So here's my take. After, you know, a little bit of pain attending and observing fellow attendants who have a little bit more time in the game, you know, five to 10 years at least, you know, I'm trying to answer for myself the question of happiness after medical training. You know, the answer that I found, well, watch this video. Hi guys and welcome to the Residence School. If you're new here, my name is Fatai and I'm a hospitalist working in South Carolina. On this channel, I teach medicine and discuss topics around medical education. So if you're into those kind of things, feel free to subscribe to the channel, leave a like for this video and uh, hit the notification button below so you can get the videos as I upload them. So while being done with residency and becoming an attending physician has its perks, it's important, however, to not overestimate your expectation of happiness and peace of mind because with every new stage in life, as you are now aware, comes with its challenges. This video, however, rather than attempt to scare anyone, is mostly to give you realistic perspectives on what to expect and how to manage yourself in order to achieve a more meaningful experience working as an attendant. So considering this topic of happiness and because I personally think it is more important to learn how to avoid suffering rather than chase happiness, you know, some of the points I'll be going over in this video will be aimed to emphasize you know, the things that are likely to make you suffer as an attendant and how to avoid them. Hopefully, you know, achieve some peace of mind and maybe somehow be able to achieve happiness eventually, uh, which, you know, for me is often a subjective and uh, you can call it something you really can't define. So let's start here. You know, because I know and you know that the job of being an attending physician is far from anything anybody would call easy. It is important, you know, to talk about things that will make your job at least slightly easier. You know, the question I always think about in my head is, what do you need to become an attendant? Or rather, what does it take to become an attendant? And it's usually one of the most common questions I personally am asked, you know, by junior colleagues or people just finishing residency. And the answer I'm usually able to give from my head and my heart usually is these four words. Knowledge, 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 composure. Not that I'm unaware of the varying capacities that we have as individual attendants, you know, regarding these things, whether it's knowledge or the ability to compose ourselves in usual uh, uh, clinical situations. Um, and not that I have an easy grasp of these things myself. I just feel like now more than ever, it's, it's just very crucial to have these things to be able to survive as an attendant, you know. The reason why I say that is this. Because as an attendant, you're often the leader of a patient care team and the patient care team often looks to you as the last resort for anything that may go wrong with the patient. And even when you have to you know, involve other specialties in the care of the patient, the team looks to you to make that decision. And even when you have senior colleagues to you know, be able to discuss the cases with and seek help, the acuity and the rapidity that these things happen, the events on the floors, requires for you to act now because another human's life is on the brink. So again, knowledge, 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 composure will be needed now more than ever as you guide your care team to a positive outcome for your patient and unfortunately, sometimes negative, inevitably negative outcomes. So that's first, and just so I don't leave you hanging, if you haven't figured out how important these things are, now is the time to start investing in them like your life depended on it. You know, there's no amount of resources, whether financial or time, that goes into acquiring knowledge that ever goes to waste. And equally, there's no amount of resources that goes into learning the art of staying calm and being composed in tough clinical situations that ever goes to waste, you know? And don't give me the BS about some people just have it, you know, some people are just calm by nature. I believe everything can be learned, you know? Even becoming a good listener can be learned. So 
put time into it and practice as much as you can. So I'm certain many of you wondered why I had knowledge, knowledge, knowledge and composure. You know, knowledge three times before composure. And uh, some of you agree, some of you see the sense in that. And for those of you who don't, you probably would agree that, you know, your degree of knowledge and experience informs greatly your composure. So having said that, for me, every day I hope to invest in solidifying my knowledge you know, first within my scope of practice and, you know, occasionally, you know, peek out of my scope of practice and see what's going on there as well. And, you know, bottom line is you have to create an individual plan for learning. You know, this is all you've done all of your life, you know, through medical training and it shouldn't stop now and it shouldn't just be about CMEs. It has to be something that you know is important to you and you have to do it at least, you know, daily, whatever chance you get to increase your knowledge, you have to do it. With regards to composure, I try to practice that every chance I get, you know, the, the, the fact is that your leadership, you know, in those instances matter and every member of your care team looks to you. So when they see that you're calm, they can they take some, some of that and, you know, are able to stay calm themselves and think to do their better work, you know, to do their best work. And equally for you, if you learn how to do that over and over again, you're more likely to be able to do your best work when you're calm and composed. Next, another reason why most people may suffer being an attendant is because of this, the big one, money, 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 money. So working as an attendant, as most people will agree, is the first time as a medical professional that you feel you're actually getting paid for the work that you do, although varyingly depending on your specialty or your location. So no doubt, making that money truly feels gratifying. But while it is gratifying, it is not unusual to find attending physicians still struggling financially or rather simply put, broke. For me, the lesson here is simple. Don't overblow your expenses because you now suddenly make quadruple of what you made as a resident or for some of those bone doctors, ten triple, you know, if that's the uh, correct English. But anyways, I always remind myself of some of the basic, basic rules around money, even though I still struggle to follow them to the letter. So these are the rules. First, have a budget. Second, spend less than you earn, for God's sake. Third, get out of debt as fast as you can, whether it's credit card debt or, you know, student loan, which I know is often a bit more difficult thing to do, but get out as fast as you can. The faster you can get out of that debt, the better for you always. Fourth, you know, save money. Save money and while you're saving money, invest money. You know, you don't want to keep your money in savings then it doesn't really make any, doesn't have any use for you while you're saving. Be wise about investing as well. And finally, please be as generous as possible. Be as generous as you can. And those are basically the things that I try to remind myself about money. So for me, it's simple. You know, being a doctor doesn't mean you're Hollywood rich. You know, at best you're able to afford a decent life for you and your family. And don't confuse being rich with being comfortable. You know, for most people, I think being comfortable is what they aspire to when they think about riches. So, you know, live within the limits of what you can afford. Uh, particularly, I think in the world of today, it's probably easier for you to define your own rich life. You know, for me, rich may mean, for example, being able to spend as much time with my babies and uh, being able to eat out on a, every weekend or something like that. It's your, it's your ability to define that for yourself. You know, the key is, you know, define your rich life based on you know what means something to you and not based on the excessive or, or the or excesses of other people you know I, I think that's important to always keep in mind when you're navigating money issues being an attendant because again uh, you can easily get broke easily easily be in debt easily be you know worsen your debt situation if you don't manage yourself well and you know a lot of people come into the attending life, you know, having that idea about money and all of a sudden you being this mega rich guy or girl and you realize it's often not the case. It's just important to keep a check on that, keep a check on that expectation and just, just glide, you know, steadily and easily as you go. And do not forget, please invest in disability insurance. You never know. You never know. That's super, super important as well. Now, Onto the next part where I think, you know, is, is, is probably 
the most important for me, work-life balance, you know. So now here is the part where, as an attending, you should never, ever mess up. At least that's what I constantly nag myself about. While it is certainly true that different people have different capacity for work and balance in life, I think it is equally true that most of us are susceptible to burnout. You know, know what you're able to cope with and work within that limit. You're going to be doing this most likely for the rest of your working life. For most of us, you know, an average of about 20 to 30 years, you know, you want to do something where you're able to remain fresh, where you're able to remain energized and motivated. So make sure that is a priority for you. You know, we chose medicine and it's often not an easy job, regardless of your, you know, work structure or environment or whatnot. We, however, have a responsibility to continue to remain energized while we do this work because it's, it's for the benefit of our patients. If you get burnt out, if you're hating what you do, at the end of the day, the people are gonna suffer your patients and they don't deserve that. I don't think anybody deserves that, you know. So it's important to make sure you work within the limits of what you're able to accommodate you know it's quite tempting for you to want to work those extra hours for that extra money uh, but it's also important that you pay attention to the fact that if that extra hustle is affecting the way that you're able to do your work and you're able to you know keep it balanced then you should definitely consider about keeping it in check remember it's a marathon not a sprint you're probably going to be doing this for a long time so you want to you know pace yourself as you go so final point finishing residency and becoming an attendant is never a blank check you used to purchase happiness you have to define what is meaningful to you and structure your life around that figure out what makes you suffer and fix it and if you can't fix it get away from it and if you can't get away from it learn to live with it without complaining find gratitude in all situations some people will die to give their family 10 percent of what you're able to give yours and now final final point to the resident or the medical student watching this video you know you don't have to wait till you're an attendant to find happiness to find peace of mind find it now by applying some of these lessons and you know most importantly find it in what you have in front of you right now everything you've been given everything you've been blessed with that you never had to beg for those are the most important things i'll see you guys on the next video bye bye